YouTube, what it do? It's your boy, they just dope back with another video. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir, I'm back, I'm back. You feel me? Uh, my apologies, it took so long to make a new video. But like I said in the last video, um, I'm very like, or just any, any like video that I upload in general, I'm very like random when I post and upload videos, so. Um, yeah, if, if y'all are like, if y'all been here on this channel, y'all, y'all know how I operate on this channel, man. But yeah, bro. So anyway, man, as y'all see by the title, uh, this is a video or this is a topic that God gave me, um, actually yesterday. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I was hesitant at first. I was like, oh, come on, man. You feel me? Like, God, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? And yeah that like that tells you like like how me and, like how me and god relationship is like he he pushes me to uh push myself you know what i'm saying and to break those barriers and see how obedient i'll be you feel me so but yeah this is basically like a part two of my testimony video that i made what last month or two months probably like a month and a half ago, I think, or a half a month ago, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, bro, it's just basically talking about overcoming sin or overcoming lust and uh, porn and pornography, you know what I'm saying? Um, I kind of like, kind of like, not really, I didn't really dive deep into it because of how much I was talking about in that video. Like y'all saw that was a long video. You feel me? So if I would have went more in depth, like it probably would have been like a two hour video. I'm not gonna cap. But um yeah, so he wanted me to basically dive deeper into like how I overcame um uh, lust and uh pornography and things like that. Um and basically how yeah, how 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 he delivered me, you feel me? uh and where i am right now you know so um but yeah this is like a real like subject that a lot of people don't really talk about and i've seen a lot of people on youtube make videos about this and i was like oh cool they made a video about it not knowing that god was gonna have me do the same exact thing i'm like oh i <laughs> bet <laughs> you feel me um but yeah like i said it's it's a it's a sensitive topic you know what i'm saying um when it comes to over overcoming lust and um pornography and things like that especially if you've been in it um coming out of it isn't easy you know what i'm saying it's not easy and i know a lot of men and women struggle with it you know uh so basically um yo you know how <laughs> You know how you, you have everything that you about to talk about before you press record and then once you hit record you forget everything that's basically where i'm at right now but um let me see so help me hold the spirit cool so thank you Holy spirit so yeah like i said it's a very like touchy subject because like i said a lot of people don't talk about it because they're probably ashamed of where they were you know and what or probably still in you know what i'm saying um but you don't have to be ashamed about it uh and to me or really the first step i'm not even gonna say to me but really the first step to your deliverance when it comes to overcoming just any sin that you're dealing with or any addiction that you're dealing with, it, it can be anything out, um, dealing with alcohol, weed, smoking, uh, clubbing, partying, uh, money, you know what I'm saying? Like um, idolizing materialistic things, um, witchcraft, you know, anything. The first thing or the first step to your deliverance is accountability and acknowledging that, you know, you have a problem and you are an addict, you know what I'm saying? Like for me, I I didn't see myself as an addict because 
I saw like thing like basically the environment that, that I was in an addict was somebody that was addicted to to like drugs somebody that was you know um, selling their body or things like that so I didn't really see myself as an addict like that um, or or in that aspect but once the guy sat me down and broke it down to me like basically having a, an addiction an addiction is basically anything that you put over God you know what I'm saying or an idol and or something that you run to before running to God that's that's something that you're addicted to or something that you basically look at as an idol um some some like something else that God's working with me on um as far as like um cutting things out and putting him first is you know social media you feel me social media is something that I I will run to first and think and think and not even think to put God first over social media you know what I'm saying but um you know, you can be addicted to social media. You can be addicted to TV, Netflix, uh, Hulu, right? The internet, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's plenty of things to be addicted to. Anything that you put over God is something that you are addicted to, you know what I'm saying? Or something that you run to for comfort, you feel me? And like I said in my testimony video, when, when my grandmother had passed, the enemy had planted that seed of being... Um, by by being in that environment of being in a young age group or the age range in middle school that's where the topic of sex and things like that come up um i think i forgot what grade i was in i was probably in the seventh grade but that's yeah seventh grade because we had life science so in seventh grade i don't know how it is everywhere else but in seventh grade in the Atlanta public school system, I'm gonna just say Atlanta public school system, right? Um, we are required to take science or life science. Um, sixth grade, it was physical science. I'm surprised I remember all this, but sixth grade, it was physical science. No, yeah, fit, but, whoa, physical science. Uh, seventh grade was life science and eighth grade was earth science. So seventh grade, we, we were basically talking about like the anatomy of the body and things like that and in seventh grade that's where we had to take um sex ed so like i'm already thinking about that right i'm already thinking about sex in general because the devil is planting these seeds of, of perversion in my mind um, and then also being introduced to pornography because like my friends are talking about it. Everybody in school talking about it. Um, but not talking about it, just like out in the open, but he, like, like in conversations, you feel me? Um, and then just talking about like, like, uh, the smash culture, you feel me? I'm just say the smash culture that started in middle school. So like all of these things that the devil is planning in our like in our minds like being like like that's the environment that that we were in or i was in i'm just speaking for myself that i was in so like he was starting to plant all of these seeds went like after my grandmother had passed so now now like i'm running to this because i'm trying to fit in to the in crowd or um i'm hearing certain things that I need to be indulging in, which I shouldn't, or none of us had business in, like, like being involved in, uh, you know, having sex and things like that, you know, um, like, the, like, those were the things that I ran to because that's, that's, that's where I found comfort in, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like, the devil knew how to how to plant those seeds and he like he gets he uh, gets to you in your most vulnerable moment and when you're young like that when you're i'll say when you're below the age of oh, i can't even say that age well, i can't even say 15 but like when you're young i'm gonna just say when you're a kid when you have that child like mine that's 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 when we're vulnerable or that's when we're most vulnerable 
you feel me? And I hope I'm saying that name right. Y'all y'all know I'm from the South, I'm from the A, so like, like my pronunciation and words may, may be a little different, maybe a little off, but that's just how I talk, you know, I'm a, uh, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, so um, that's when we were most vulnerable. Um, and we can see that in today's time, like, like there's so much, bro, I can talk about this subject like for, for hours, but we see like in today's society, like they're they're preying on the kids to to plant all these seeds and TV shows and in their schools, taking the Bible out of their school system and stuff like that. Like it's so it's so wicked to be a kid nowadays, bro. Like like they're like they're trying to make it seem so innocent to to say that that um oh they um that that they need to what am i trying to say help me hold spirit that they're or that that they need to know who they are they need to or that they need to find themselves and all these things like that but they're still learning themselves you know what i'm saying like they're they're still learning them they're still learning this life so it's like bro it's so easy bro bro it's so much going on in this world right now when it like like when it pertains to like how how society is trying to shape and mold the, like like the like these kids minds and stuff like that um but i'm not gonna dive into that subject right now but um yeah so like i was very vulnerable I was very vulnerable in my mind that the enemy was planting all these different seeds like that. Um, so it made me curious. It made a lot of us curious. You, you feel me? So, and and that's where it all starts. That curiosity. You feel me? And that's where I was. I was curious. I was by myself. I was lonely. I was sad because I was because I just lost my grandmother and things like that. So it's my first time really dealing with grief like that so it was like my my safe haven in a sense and the devil made me feel or made me think that that this is what I needed to um fulfill myself again or to to, to make myself whole right um and that's how a lot of people get trapped into it because it's bro it's so easy to get trapped in 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 that world you feel me in that world of lust in that world of uh, smash culture in that in that world of pornography and that like in that world it's just so easy to get drawn in because it's so commercialized now and it's so like it's so easy to get access to it now um but how i would but how i was introduced to it like i said through through friends um through uh, cousins and things like that um being being not really like what well at that time i was the youngest cousin or one of the youngest cousins <laughs> so so like it was like very easy to hang around some of my older cousins and hear the conversations that that they was having like you know hmm i wonder what that's like you feel me and then feeding into that curiosity that's where a lot of those those things of indulging into that 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 world came from um so like it's so easy for a lot of us to get caught up into that and i'm pretty sure somebody that's watching this video right now or a lot of you watching this video right now you're like you probably agreeing like yo that's how i got caught into it you feel me like it, like it's so easy to get caught up in like bro it's it's bro it's bro, it's really a trap bro it's really a trap because once you're in it and and you're in that cycle now it's so easy to, it's so easy to stay in that hamster wheel um and that's where the devil wants you that's where he prays prays on getting you to because like i said you're young you you have a lot of questions you're you're, you're trying to figure out this life you're trying to figure out how to navigate at an early age but we but we should but we should be sticking to this childlike mindset um that that we have we just need to be focused on being a kid bro. like just need to be like we bro we need to stop trying to grow up so i can't see trying to but we we needed to stop y'all bro y'all know what i'm trying to say we needed to stop trying to grow up so fast um 
and that's where we was. We was we was trying to be fast. We, like we was trying to keep up with our friends, knowing that some of our friends were probably lying, saying that they was doing some of this stuff, but they probably but but nine times nine times out of ten they was capping, you know. <laughs> So uh, yeah, bro, that's where I was at that time. And fast forward into like high school, I, like I said, I was caught up in that, in that cycle. I was caught up in that uh, hamster wheel. And then going into high school, right? Now the devil is like telling you to go to parties, telling you to, hey, look, look at this girl right here. You know what I'm saying? Look at this girl right there or, or, or for my ladies. I just glitched right there, right? But for my ladies, oh, look at this dude right here. Look at him. You feel me? So we are like, like the lust of the eyes, bro. The lust of the eyes, man. Like it's so easy to get caught up with with the lust of the eyes with looking because I can't remember where it says it verbatim in the Bible. In I say in the Bible, but, but <laughs> in the Bible, but um, you know, it. It says that if you look at at a woman or a man with with lust, you committed adultery in your heart, or you, yeah, you committed adultery in your heart or, or or fornication in your heart, right? So just by you looking and you and you like fantasizing, you like having that fantasy of like, oh, I wonder how they are like. You feel me? Like you already committed that sin in your heart. You feel me? Even though you probably ain't did nothing yet. Don't mind me, I'm in the parking lot, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so that was just random. But um, yeah, even though you haven't physically done anything in your heart, in your mind, you've already committed that sin. You feel me? So it, like, that's where the devil had me and and like, it was, bro, it was, bro. I look back now and I'm like, bro, what? Like, ill. you feel me? Um, But thank God for, for deliverance thank god for a changing and a room and a renewing of the mind because like like i bro i look back to where i came or from i look back at where i came from and i'm so thankful for his grace and his mercy because if i would have died a long time ago in in high school bro hey <laughs> bro Bruh, you feel me? So, um, but yeah, going into college, I was by myself. I didn't have a roommate in, in college, so that gave me more access to do things behind closed doors, you feel me? And out and, and outwardly out in the open, you know what I'm saying? I would put on this this persona that I'm happy and things like that. But behind closed doors, I was I was broken, I was sad, I was I was trying to find find happiness. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm on I'm on different social media uh, outlets, trying to you know find a bay and things like that. Trying to make friends and things like that to keep me or to keep my mind out of or or off of that. Um, but but me trying to handle things on my own, it just dug myself in a deeper hole. You feel me? Um, and I'm gonna die or I'm gonna touch touch on that later on, but um, yeah, so in college now, now I'm going to parties, I'm drinking, um, smoking, and things like that. So it was it was more easier for the devil to to like keep me in that world, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it was so easy for him to keep me trapped, to, 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 to keep me bound, and to not talk about it. You feel me? When you're in in that life of of um, of um, part of, of pornography and things like that, when you're dealing with that behind closed doors, that's like that's where it stays, and and that's where the enemy wants it to stay. He doesn't want you to talk about it. He doesn't want you to vent. He doesn't want you to talk to talk about your like uh, what you're going through in your mind because that's where the biggest battle is going on at is in your mind you feel me so if he can keep you trapped in your mind he got you he got you like a dog on a collar or or a leash hopefully that made sense <laughs> but yeah so like i like i felt trapped you know what i'm saying like i felt 
like even though I'm around all these people, even though I'm making friends and not a lot of friends and stuff like that, but even though I'm connected with people outside of what I got going on behind closed doors, but once I get behind those closed doors, I, bro, I'm in a battle. I'm in a battle. Um, there were plenty of times where I, I wanted to stop. I wanted to break out of that. I wanted to break out of that lifestyle, but um, like I said, I didn't know how because I was dealing with it by myself. I was dealing with it on my own. And like I said, I was, bruh, I was in church. I was playing the drums. I was a music. I, I was a musician. I don't know why I couldn't get the word out. But yeah, I was a music. I played the drums, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, I was in church. I was up under the word. But like I said in my tip or the uh, part part one, right? I was in church, but I wasn't in church. I wasn't in church, right? The church wasn't in me. You feel me? Like I was just going to church, playing drums and talking to my friends, treating it like a social gathering instead of really listening to what the pastor is saying and and going out into the world and living life according to what is being taught. You feel me? Um, I was very lukewarm. You know, so I was very lukewarm. Um, um, and so, yeah, like I said, I was in church. So um, I, I knew about Jesus, but like I said, I was so caught up in doing, doing things my way um, I didn't know to go to God. You feel me? I knew, like, like I heard the phrase uh, having a relationship with God, but I just didn't know where where that started. Because, like I said, I was in church, but I wasn't really paying attention. I wasn't like like I wasn't making an effort to to um, get in a relationship with with Christ. Um, so once I left for college like I said I was in South Carolina so I was away from home I bro church was the last thing on my mind <laughs> God was the last thing on my mind um but like I said in my last or the uh, testimony part part one right I I got to a point to where I did have a moment of of um being 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 sick and tired I got it like I got to a point some like some people will probably call it homesickness right I and I was homesick but I was tired of being in that cycle um I was tired of being in that same cycle of doing the same thing um killing myself on the inside and and like I just wanted something new I thought going to going to college was going to going to give me a new new life you feel me? I thought I could start over and just start new, but the, you can try so so hard to run away from your problems at home, but those but just because you're in a new place, just because just because you're in and just because you're in a new environment um, outwardly, that same environment in, inwardly is still going to be with you. You feel me? And that's where I was. Like I was trying to run away from from that addiction i was trying to run away from being being lonely dealing with grief um and things like that um to where i was i had come to a realization that yo college ain't doing it for me you feel me not knowing that the one answer that i was looking for was in christ you feel me but i like i said i was just stuck you know and when you're stuck in an environment, when you're stuck in a place where you're used to doing things like routinely, like it's so easy to get caught up and it's so easy to not realize where you are. Um, but once you do come out of it, you, you then realize that, man, that environment that I was in, I was, I was used to my feel, right? I was used to my stink. I was used to my funk or my funk. Are. All my non-country folk out there, <laughs> you feel me? Like, like it's so easy to y'all. <laughs> this probably gonna be a crazy example, but 
Y'all ever been to a house that was dirty? <laughs> this all gonna make sense, right? But y'all ever been to a house that was dirty, that was nasty, and and you walk in and you looking at the floor like, oh my god, like the floor is dirty. They got they got stains on the floor. They got roaches crawling on like crawling around on the wall. The wall dirty. You feel me? It kind of kind of it kind of got a little stench to it as soon as you walk in. And to you, you like, oh my God, like what's going on? But to the person that lives there, they just walking around like it's normal. You feel me? And that's where a lot of people are. And that's where I was. Like I said, I'm gonna just speak for myself. That's where I was. I was, I, I was used to my filth. I was used to my stink. I was used to my funk. You know what I'm saying? I was used to them dirty carpets. I was, I, I, I was used to, um, those, ro those those roaches crawling around on the wall, crawling crawling on the floor. I was used to all them dishes in the sink that needed cleaning, but but the dirty water, like you feel me? I wasn't trying to to unplug the drain so that the water could go down the drain. You feel me? I was just so caught up. I was just so stuck, right? Um, and that happened for literally a semester in college. Like I was just stuck in that, bro, you feel me? Um, so when I came back home from college, like I said, I was like, all right, well, if, if college ain't gonna do it for me, maybe coming back home um, will have, or maybe coming back home will help me change my, my uh, mind and change change the way that i'm moving or operating on a day-to-day -day basis but like i said stuck in your own filth that same filth was still stuck in me so i'm still doing the same exact thing right <clears throat> when i came back home um so um yeah so the fast forward because i don't want to make this too long of a video but uh fast forward man uh when I came back home from, from a college, this is when I started to take notice to God trying to wake me up, trying to get me to wake up and smell the roses. You feel me? For a lack of better words, <laughs> right? So I was at home one day by myself and something just told me to go on YouTube because I was always on YouTube around this time. I just started making YouTube videos around this time. Um, so something just told me to just go on YouTube one day and on on like the home screen, well, I just started watching random videos. I think it was like, I think I was just watching like clothing haul videos, sneaker pickup videos and stuff like that. Um, but on the recommended videos on the side, it had this this girl telling her testimony of how she died and went to hell and and so i'm like hmm <laughs> you feel me i'm not gonna lie i i kept scrolling i was like all right i'm um, not today <laughs> you feel me i'm like uh -uh, nope nope so like i ignored this this one video for like a whole I can't remember because it's been so long, but I can't re like remember how long it was, but I kept ignoring it because every time I got on YouTube, I kept seeing that same video pop up up under every recommended section under the videos that I was watching. And so one day I was just like, you know what? I clicked on it and I started watching it. And she's telling her testimony of her going to hell and things like that when she died and went to hell. And I'm like, Ooh. 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 And I was shook to say the least, man. I was shooketh. I was like, oh man. And that was my first, I guess, real like realization of sin. Because like I said, when you're in sin, you don't really know that you're in sin because you're doing what what you feel like is normal. You know what I'm saying? Um, my man, my neck is hurting. <laughs> but like, you don't realize that you're in sin. But once you are made, but once you are made aware, 
of what sin is, you like my my mind was like, oh, hold on, wait a minute. And that was my first time of feeling conviction. Like that was my first time ever experiencing conviction, like for the first time. Um how old was I? I think I was 19 or 20 or something like that. That was my first time experiencing conviction. You know, and I did not, bro. I didn't like it. I was like, hold oh, no, on, bro. What is, like, what is this feeling? I never felt this before, bro. I've always had a feeling of fear or what's the word I'm looking for? I have always had a had a feeling of uncertainty. That's what I'm looking for. I've always had a feeling of uncertainty about death of like if I were to die like where like where would I go so like to me like if I died because I went to church and stuff like that I thought I was going to heaven but when she said Christians were going to hell too I was like oh hold on wait a minute <laughs> you feel me hold on wait a minute play on the play you feel me time out you know what I'm saying I was like hold on bro um so yeah like that opened a wormhole of me just binge watching different testimonies about people having near-death experiences and them going to hell and the very next one that I saw was this man talking about his his uh hell testimony and how he died and went to hell and bruh <laughs> what shook me was that he 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 said when when he went to hell he saw a section of like people that died and was addicted to sex and that was addicted to pornography and things like that and I'm not gonna say what he said because it was very graphic but bruh when he said that I was like oh oh god wait a minute I was like what do I need to do to change myself but do y'all think I changed at that moment no it was a process but I kept going back to a to pornography and things like that. I kept going back to it because that like 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 I said, that was all that I knew. I was in church, but I wasn't in church. I wasn't in church. I wasn't in church. You feel me? Um so but every time that I kept going back to it, it's one thing to do it and not be aware of your or to not be aware of the fact that you're sinning. But now when you go back and you are made aware that you're sinning, when you go back to it, it's like, it felt different, bro. <laughs> like, it was totally different, bro. It was like, hold on. <laughs> after, after I watched it and did whatever I did, right? After the fact, I felt like in my heart I was like yo this ain't right I was now being convicted and every time that I indulged in it I, bro, I after like afterwards I felt dirty I felt nasty I was like bro like what is going on like I never felt this before after I watched it after I did what I did you, you know what I'm saying um so after that or now looking back at it or back at it now, I know that was the Holy Spirit convicting me. Um, but the devil fed into that and basically made me feel felt like shame and guilt and basically was condemning me. Like I said, back then I didn't know none of these terms. I didn't know about conviction. I didn't know about condemn like con like condemnation and things like that. So I didn't know what none of these like none of these feelings were. So because it made me feel bad. The only thing that I knew to run to when I was feeling bad was pornography. So I like the devil kept me in that trap because I didn't know to run to Christ. I didn't know to run to Jesus. Um, like I said, I was in church, but I felt like, oh, I'm like, like I'm doing this like like I'm indulging in this sin, so I feel like the like Jesus, Jesus wouldn't want me to come to Him. You feel me? And that's how the devil traps a lot of people because he makes you feel like 
you can't run to Christ. But the one thing that Christ wants you to do, the one thing that God wants you to do is to run to him. Right? Because he but right right because he has all the answers. Because he has that fulfillment that you're looking for. He has that mercy. Or he be, he's 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 gonna show you mercy. He's gonna show you grace. And he has so much grace to give you, right? But I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that at the time. Um, so fast forwarding, because I could keep going, right? Basically, all, all throughout like these these years of, of life after college and things like that to like going into work and trying to uh, find find different vices to get me out of this cycle by by working by trying to make money in that I created a new item which was money like I said in my last video um so the devil just was working trying to keep me out of knowing that I could run to Christ for 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 that out that I was looking for you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but like I said, that main thing that that, that I would run to was uh, that, that that lustful desire of pornography and things like that. Um, and then also with, with uh, different women. You feel me? Um, so yeah, just to fast forward, because like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make this a long video. But um, so basically, after... I truly, or no, after I had that encounter with God in Miami, uh, if y'all watched the last video or my part part one of my testimony, um, if y'all watched that video in Miami, I had an encounter with, with God for the very first time. And like after that, that's when I really wanted to like, started to make an effort to stop and there were plenty of times like i said i'm skipping ahead but to like rewind back there were times where i did try to make an effort to to stop but it was on my own accord it was on my own like will or it was on my own strength you feel me and when you try to do things off your own strength when you try to 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 break a habit when you try to break it like break an addiction on your own uh strength or by your own strength you're always going to like you're like you're always going to fall into that temptation you're always going to fall into and in, in, into that desire because you're not running to the source to get you out of that to to keep you out of that you feel me so i didn't know to run to god because be, because i felt like he like he didn't want anything to do with it you know what i'm saying um so <clears throat> so like i said i was trying to make an effort to yo it's getting hot <laughs> um i was trying to make an effort to to stop you feel me Hopefully y'all don't hear this, this uh, air conditioner, but it's hot, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was trying to shake my, or I was trying to break my addiction on my own strength, but I kept falling back into temptation time and time again. And every time I kept falling into the temptation and my desires again and again and again, um, the more I felt God didn't, didn't want to, or the more I felt God wouldn't want anything to do with me. The more I felt I couldn't go to him with what I was dealing with, with all of the baggage, with with, with all of my stank, you feel me? But the one who can truly wash and clean you and cleanse you of your filth, of your stank, of your funk is Christ, you feel me? Um, and I and I had verbal, ver, ver, I had verbally Gave, like gave my life to Christ over and over and over again re like rededicated my life to Christ and things like that but like I said I kept falling back into it and that was the thing that I didn't know at the time was that like, like 
like I said, I heard it over and over again in church um, that, you know, when you give your life to Christ, that your life, that uh, that uh, you are now saved and things like that. So um, I had a knowing of like giving my life to Christ and, and of being saved. But once I left out of church, my lifestyle stayed the same. You feel me? I I stayed lukewarm. I didn't I didn't have that desire to change, but I was saved. You, you feel me? Um, so I didn't know that that I needed to change my mindset. You feel me? I didn't know that I needed to change my mindset um, and have that desire myself to want to change right because god he he like he's going to offer salvation for like like to you um but once you do make that verbal uh that that a uh, verbal declaration that that you have given your life to christ it just it just doesn't stop there after that there's steps that that need to be taken right there's there, there's the pruning process there's the isolation there's that will that there's that wilderness season of him pruning you of him changing your mindset of changing how how you think about things and how and and you changing the way that you would think about sin and that lifestyle that you're living in right um Right there, right there needs to be a renewal of the mind, and like I said earlier, like I said earlier, you have to play a part in your deliverance. You feel me? Um, like I said, God is going to give you the the, inv the invitation, and it's up to you to accept the invitation. But then once you accept the invitation, you're not just going to go to a party and just just think that it's going to be fun automatically because you're in a party. Right. You have to agree. Right. You have to come into agreement to get lit so that you can have a good time. You feel me? So it's the same thing with accepting that, that, that uh, invitation with Christ. Right. You have to accept the invitation, of course. Boom. But now you have to walk with him now you have to die die of yourself you have to kill your your flesh daily it's a daily walk like i said in the last video right it's a daily walk it's a daily renewing of the mind because every day you're going to be hit with temptation every single day right because you come to christ your your problems doesn't automatically go away just like that because you gave him to christ no there has to right um those those same temptations are gonna constantly tempt you because the devil just be, <laughs> and I said that because it's like once you give your life to Christ the devil is like hold on wait a minute he's trying to switch sides or she or she trying to switch sides hold on I probably gotta go double time now I probably gotta go or work overtime to get them back to where they were or or to where they were because ain't no way they finna change up on me you feel me? You think because you give your life to Christ that the devil's gonna just willingly give you over to to a God? Nah. He gonna try to get you back into your lifestyle. He's gonna like or to your old lifestyle, right? So he's gonna constantly try to tempt you, and that's where I kept falling short. Right, right. I had that mindset of of okay because I gave my life to Christ, all my problems are white clean. Um. Of course, you're wiped clean of your sins, but like I said, the devil's going to try to get you back into your life or your old life, into your old self, and make you think that, oh, you, <laughs> he's going to, bro, he's going to nag at you. He's going to just talk, like, like he's going to talk nasty to you, trying to belittle you and make you basically like manipulate. Man He's gonna to try to manipulate, bruh. I can't talk. He's gonna to try to manipulate you into thinking that you had it easier when you were out in the world doing it on your own, when you were living life on your own terms, when you was doing you, when you was just doing you by yourself and not trying to do this Jesus walk now. 
right he's trying to right he's going to try to make you feel feel like or guilt trip you into thinking that oh oh um you had it so much easier when you was doing it your way when you were giving it to your flesh when you were um in that party lifestyle when you were in that life of porn of, of pornography addiction right he's going to make you feel like oh this is what you need to go back to right to uh, to uh, make you feel feel happy again or to make you feel um some type of fulfillment but you've automatically accept, ex accepted that invitation of fulfillment of 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 a new life when you gave your life to Christ, but now you just have to walk this daily life on like every single day. You have to kill your flesh daily. You know what I'm saying? And I know y'all hear that phrase, kill like like kill your flesh daily. Um, it's not saying that you just have to physically. No, um, it's not saying that you physically die. It's not saying that. It's saying that those desires that you once had. Um, Galatians 5, uh, verse, let me see, I think I wrote, wrote it down, where is it, oh, hold on, where did it go, uh, but Galatians 5, I can't remember it verbatim, but, um, the, uh, things of the flesh, those, uh, things of the fe uh, flesh, sexual immorality, um, I can't, I can't remember everything, but I'm gonna pop it up on the screen. Hopefully, I, I hopefully I remember to pop it up on the screen. But uh, you know, I can't. Where did the paper go? I wrote it down. Like I said, bro. Like, like I'm not trying to come off as like I know everything. You feel me? But sometimes I have to write things down. I like I'm not a Bible quote. Like I can't quote scripture off the back of my hand like that, right? But I know it's. Galatians 5 for sure um for like but for those that know that that verse or that scripture talking about the uh the um the acts of the flesh your desires those are things that you desire in the flesh man um uh, I like adultery witchcraft uh money um sexual immorality um uh, you know, all these things of the flesh, you have to die of the flesh every single day. So those things that you desire that aren't of God, you, like you have to kill that side of you to to keep to to keep you on this righteous walk. I'm gonna just say that. Um, and then also the fruits of the spirit, because you have to understand the flesh and spirit they can't coexist inside you. Right, it's either one or the other. It's either white or black. There's no gray. There's no gray area, right? So you have to dive your die like you have to dive your flesh daily. Um, water and oil can't like they don't go together. You feel me? So you have to dive your flesh every single day because now that you gave your life to Christ, now that you accepted the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, those things that you once did, like I said, once I truly gave my life to Christ after after I had that encounter with God, um, after I had that encounter with God, bro, those things that I once desired started to slowly, slowly die. But like I said, there were times where I did get tempted, but and and there were times where I did fall back into sin, right? Um, and it took me a while to understand that just because I gave into just just because I gave into temptation just because I gave into my sin again and again and again and again because we're going to fall short we're not perfect because it's in our human desire to fall into our into our into our desires into our flesh right but just because I kept falling into our or just because I kept falling into my sin over and over and over again um, before I had that knowing of God forgets our sin, right? But like I said, like before I truly had an understanding of, of when I do fall into my sin, I can 
I can run to Christ. I I don't have to no longer run back to what I was used to, or I don't have to no longer feel condemned of or or up or because I fell back into my sin. Um, now I had that knowledge of all right, cool, because it says that the beginning of of uh, wisdom is knowledge. I think that's how you say it. I forgot where it says it in. Hopefully I'm saying it right. If I'm not, correct me in the comments down below. Um, but um, now that I have knowing that I can now run to Christ instead of running to to what I once found comfort in, um, I started to have a different outlook on, on uh, pornography and things like that. Um, and also in my also in my pruning process, um, I came across this video. I don't know if y'all seen the channel. The, the truth is, his channel, bro. He, bro, his 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 channel shifted my mindset on a lot of things that I thought that was so important in the world or in a worldly outlook. His channel changed my perception on a lot of things as far as like the music industry. Um, pornography you feel me it was this one video that i saw um i think it was earlier this year or like late last year or something like that but he broke the adult film industry down to like like a t to where after the video like not even after throughout the video i felt conviction all through the video i was like yo this is what i was like participating in this is what the enemy had me trapped in. I'm like, yo, what? If y'all haven't seen that video, please watch it. It'll it'll change the way you look at a lot of, bro. <laughs> bro, if y'all seen that video, comment down below, bro. If you know, you know. If you seen that video, bro, like it'll change your whole outlook. And it's so crazy. Like once you like once. Once God knocks that taste out of your mouth, wow. Once God knocks that taste out of your mouth of, of whatever you are like addicted to, whether that be smoking, pornography, drinking, money, um, it, like anything of the world, once he knocks that taste out of your mouth, you'll never look at it the same. Like, like you'll never like desire it again. Um, I'll just put this in to like practical terms. Um, I used to drink soda so much, but once I stopped drinking water, or drink, drinking water, once I stopped drinking soda so much, after like after a while of me just drinking water and juice, a couple of months ago I tried drinking Sprite for the first time. Oh no, I think it was like ginger ale or something like that. Um, I tried drinking it, and when I tasted, it, I'm like. Ew, <laughs> like it tastes so bright, bro. It's like you can taste the chemical. I, I don't know how it is for everybody else, but when I'm like off of something for a long time, when it comes to like eating something for a long time, when I taste it again, it's like ew. You feel me? And I can taste the chemicals in it, and, and, and I no longer desire soda after that day. I'm like, bro, I don't ever want to drink soda again. You feel me? So it's like that. Um for something else um fast food i don't like eating fast food a lot especially bruh i'm gonna talk about taco bell <laughs> right guys taco bell is something that that i never thought i would stop eating but back in bro, i haven't eaten taco bell since 2007 or 2008 i've never eaten taco bell ever since that year because the last time i ate it i got sick and i just didn't like how it tasted and after that day, I never ate it again. And I can guarantee you, if I tried Taco Bell, which I will not, if I ever tried to go back and eat Taco Bell again now, I can taste it and I can taste how, how different it is from authentic uh, Hispanic food. You feel me? So it's like that, bro. Once God knocks that taste out of your mouth um, of what you were once addicted to, it's like, when you try to go back to it again, like first off, you know better. 
right? And that's and that's what I had to tell myself. Like that was one time, like recently, a couple of a couple of weeks ago or something like that, or like last month. The devil tried to plant that seed in my mind. Like, hey, look, it's been a while. <laughs> you feel me? But the Holy Spirit immediately convicted me and was like, you know better. <laughs> you feel me? Like, you know better. Like, you know, if you try to dive back into that world, you're going to feel shame and guilt again. And it's better to not put yourself through that again. So what I decided to do, I decided to, to say, hey, God, look, I'm dealing with this. I'm battling with this in my mind. And, like the enemy is trying to get me to slip and fall again. And so I started to pray. And the next morning, it like it weighed heavy on my heart. And that's that's what that's what brought that video of shame and guilt. The uh, last video, I think. I think that was the last video. Yeah, that's what birthed that, that video of the shame and guilt. The shame and guilt. The shame and guilt video that I made. Um, like, I felt like this, like, heaviness of shame and guilt. Of just having a thought of trying to go back into that life again. And, the, and, and, and God had to let me know that, hey, look. You came to me. You did the one thing that I've been wanting you to do all, like, all of this time. Was just come to me and give it all to, to uh, me. And... Once he had me realize that, I'm like, okay. So to defeat the enemy, I just gotta run, like run to Christ. I just have to continue to kill, like kill my flesh daily. I just have to tell myself no. Like what Cat Williams said, we when uh, did he try to get you to party with him? You gotta tell him no, right? <laughs> but look, bro, you gotta tell your flesh. You gotta tell the enemy no, bro. You feel me? And that's. And that's when I knew I had the enemy defeated because I told him no. And there's times where he continuously tries to plant those seeds to get me to fall back into sin. And every time, no, no. If you have, bro, if, bro, if you have to say it out loud, if, bro, if you have to say no out loud, if, bro, do it, do it, bro. Um, because a verbal no. It's going to hit different. It's going to hit a little different. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, no, no. <laughs> there was, bro, there was one point today where that, like, like the enemy tried to flash a thought in my mind. I was like, no, uh-uh, ain't going to happen. No, <laughs> no. You feel me? Um, but in your weak moments, just know in God you are made strong. You feel me? In those moments of weakness, bro, go to Christ. Go to him. Run to Christ. Run to God, bro. Um, and that's how you can over, overcome lust. That's how you can overcome pornography. That's how I overcame it, bro. Like, just telling him no and making a conscious effort to take those steps to say no. You feel me? And this video is going on an hour long. I said I wasn't going to make this video long, but, hey, the Holy Spirit moved. Um... But yeah, bro, um, for me, I also want to say this. The devil knows your triggers. You feel me? The devil knows your triggers, man. Like, he knows what's going to trigger you. He knows what's going to get you to flirt with the idea of wanting to fall into sin, wanting to fall into pornography, wanting you to fall back into that lifestyle, wanting you to fall back into drinking, wanting you to fall back into smoking. He knows your triggers. He's Like, he knows what's going to trigger you. He knows if you're a person that's that's struggling or that's that's uh, struggling with wanting to stop smoking. He knows that he's going to bring the weed man to you. Hey, look, bro. I, hey, I got this for the loaf. And he knows how to get you. <laughs> like, like he knows your triggers. But you just got to be like, nah, I'm good, bro. I don't smoke no more. Or he, bro, he knows that if you're a person that's trying to get off of drinking, he, like... He knows how to get you into that that environment of, hey, look, bro, we got this party going on. Hey, look, drinks on me tonight, bro. Free, free night tonight. We got the section, bro. Come on, bro. Come out and drink, or come out, sis. Come and turn up with this girls, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, the devil knows how to get you. He knows your triggers. So you just have to make an effort to say no to them triggers. 
Uh, for me, like I said, dealing with less, dealing with pornography, um, Twitter, social media, just in general. Social media has turned into, bro. It, bro, it has turned into, bro. It's turned into something that it was not years before. Like, especially what they call Twitter now, X, bro. That, bro, that's so foreshadowing, bro. And what, and what Twitter has on it now, bro. Bro, it's so telling. Like, the direction that the enemy was trying to turn that 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 social media outlet into because like bro it, it was like every time i got on twitter bro it's like i kept getting triggered it was like bro come on bro like i'm trying not to you feel me and so i had to i think yeah last month god had god had already been like dealing with me or trying to like get me to delete social media or not just or not delete my accounts and stuff like that but just to like the de like delete the apps off your phone at least you feel me and it took me so long because with twitter i don't use twitter or i don't use x or nah i don't use twitter i bro i stopped using twitter consistently back in like 2016 2017 but i always kept it because that was how i always kept up with like sneaker releases because for those who don't know I'm a sneakerhead so I will always keep that like I will always make that excuse of like I don't want to delete the app I don't want to I don't want to delete the Twitter app because this is how I get my notifications about sneakers and stuff right and so one day I was just like bruh sneakers ain't that important like why am I making sneakers so much like so much more important than God and the Holy Spirit had to convict me about that. And so I'm like, all right, you know what? Twitter, X, deleted. <laughs> it's gone. Um, so I did that. But he kept like pulling on my spirit to say, hey, look, bro, IG next, bro. Go ahead and do it. Because I don't know why, bro, but like, bro, I, I, I don't know why, bro, but like every time I get on Twitter, it's like, I'm never, or not on Twitter, but IG, I'm, bruh, all these people, all these girls' accounts that I'm not following always will pop up on my feed, and it's like, bro, come on, man, <laughs> like, come on, dog, like, I'm trying, I'm trying, God, I'll try my best, try my best, but right, so it was like, bruh, delete the app, and so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the app, but what kept me from deleting the app for so long was because, like, I was, like, I was, always getting like messages from my youtube channels on there of like my subscribers and stuff like that so i would always make the excuse of like well this is how i stay connected to my uh sus like my subscribers but he like hey look you can you can connect to your subscribers on youtube bro like delete the app and so i was like all right you know what deleted it and and once i deleted it bro I felt so free. I felt, I felt a sense of I don't have to worry about. And, and then also, what kept me from like deleting social media or deleting my IG account or not account, but the IG app and things like that was the fear of missing out of like not knowing what this person is doing or them not knowing what I'm doing. But, bruh, even if you off the app, they don't care. And I don't care. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, delete the app. And once, and, and once he had me realize that, I was like, all right, you know what? They, like, they don't care. And if I were to post something new, all they're going to do is just like it. And that's it. And keep scrolling. So it was like, all right, cool. I'm going to delete the app. And so once I was able to delete those things, those triggers was like, those, like, those triggers were gone. And so now all the things that the enemy tried to like plant those seeds in my mind to get me to fall back into pornography and things like that were gone. Once those things were wiped away, he had no ammo. He had no ammo. The worst thing he could do was try to plant a sexual desire in my mind. But even then I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, ain't gonna happen. Uh-uh, you feel me? Um, 
so yeah bro um just i say all that to say man this whole testimony man um you have to one you have to come come into a place of accountability holding yourself accountable um also you have to come to a place of acceptance that hey look i'm addicted you feel me i'm i'm in a place where i can't shake this thing by myself and it's like it's an addiction you feel me uh and it's just with anything in general anything that you're addicted to you have to come to terms and you have to come into a place of accountability and hold yourself accountable like all right look i'm addicted to this thing next is you have to have that desire to stop and you wanted to truly stop you feel me and that's where i was and i was like all right look i don't want to do this no more there were times where like like, like i said there were times where i did stop because i didn't want to do it no more and then i would get that i would get triggered again and then boom the uh, enemy would have me falling back into it boom right so all right youtube so um my bad my uh my storage got full on my phone so i was just like i gotta wait till i get home you feel me but um yeah i, I did not intend for this video to be this long because because I, I looked at the time and it's like an hour or so but uh yeah just to because i was wrapping up but uh like i said you have to want or you have to have that desire to stop um for me like i said i i i want once I came into knowing that what I was doing was a sin, uh, and once I like really gave my life to Christ and was like, "All right, look, I'm following you. Just, just lead me and guide me and let me know how to go about it." You feel me? Um, so he he gave me that, or he let me know that I have to want to stop. And then he just gave me like some of the practical things to to do, like like to go go a day don't try to shoot for the stars first no start start day by day you feel me and then once you get that one day done all right cool next day next day all right boom next day boom you feel me and and when you look up and by the time you look up you pretty much win a whole week you feel me um but in that when i first started doing it i was not confided in him i wasn't going back to him when i got the like the desire to do it i i just would go based off of my own strength but then after i or once he revealed to me that hey look now you have to come to me and give it to me you feel me um and let and let me handle it you know what i'm saying and so once i had that realization once he gave me that revelation then that's when i started to incorporate hey look god this is how i'm feeling right now i'm feeling weak give me strength you know what i'm saying then he began to work on me and he and when i was weak he became my strength you know what i'm saying so you like just just confide in him and just be vulnerable be vulnerable with him man because i'm telling you he that's that's really all he wants he wants to know that you're going to fall fall on him and lean on him when you're in that time of need when you're in that time of weakness you know what i'm saying where you're weak he's made strong you know what i'm saying he's gonna make you strong you feel me so man um uh and yeah bro like cut off the triggers you feel me whether that be cutting off social media cutting tv off um turning down the party turning down the smoking sessions all that stuff turn it down man i'm telling you you have to make the conscious the conscious effort and decision to say no bro like you have to tell your demons no you feel me and that's it's bro i'm telling you it's not gonna be easy but when you when you confide in god when you when you confide in in jesus i'm telling you he he's gonna make it easier He's gonna make the walk easier. Like I said, it's a daily walk. It's a daily thing. You have to clear, you you have to kill your flesh daily. You know what I'm saying? But um, as you go about it every single day, when you're in your word, when you're reading your word, asking Him for revelation and, and things like that. Don't just read the Bible just to read it. So you read it for the day. Um, that was one thing that 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 I was doing. I was just reading just to say, okay, I read the Bible. And you feel me? I ain't, 
I ain't have any like type of revelation. No, first ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you to help prune you and help mold you into what what the word is intended to do. You know what I'm saying? And once you do that, once you take those steps, I'm telling you, um, your walk isn't gonna be easier. Well, it's it's gonna be easier because now you have Christ, but I'm telling you, um, it's gonna be a daily, daily battle. You feel me? The war is defeating the enemy. You know what I'm saying? When you look at a war, it's not won in one day. You no, know, there's multiple battles taking place, different days and things like that. There's multiple battles taking place for for the overall result for the battle or for the war to be won. You feel me? So we have to take this thing day by day. The battle is daily. You feel me? And also you have to stay prayed up because the battle is more so in the mind. Like it's a mental thing for sure. It's a spiritual thing. Spiritual warfare is real. You feel me? So um yeah, just 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 stay in your word. You feel me? Ask the Holy Spirit to re to reveal things to you and also ask the Holy Spirit to, to reveal yourself your your yourself to you you feel me um one of the hardest things that that i asked god to do was to show me myself the way that he sees me you feel me and then once i saw myself and once i seen my field i was like oh i'm dirty i'm nasty i'm not clean so i asked him to just clean me and mold me into the righteous person that he wants me to be you feel me um and like i said i'm not perfect nobody's perfect bro nobody's no no nobody that calls himself a christian is perfect you feel me but it's a daily walk to righteousness you know what i'm saying um and we're striving that's the thing we have to strive to to want to be like the righteous one you feel me which is jesus you know what i'm saying so yeah bro um that's that's pretty much it. Like I said, I didn't want to make this video any longer and this clip is already going on like six minutes. So yeah, bro, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully it touched somebody. Um, I would just be real. Hopefully it convicted somebody like the way those those videos convicted me. You feel me? Cause bro, it's definitely convicted for sure, man. And also I, I had to have a real conversation with myself and say, hey, look, man, I can't be proclaiming to be a Christian and I'm still living this lifestyle. I'm still doing things behind closed doors that that, that aren't righteous, you feel me? So, um, yeah, I just had to hold myself accountable and say, hey, look, bro, I, hey, I can't do it on my own. Jesus, I need you, you feel me? And that's when I, I allowed him to just do a work in me and do a work in my life, man, and just change my mindset, change the way I think um, to, to just truly strive to be like him. You know what I'm saying? So that we can be up there with him when we are, um, when when we do pass away. You feel me? So, yeah, bro. Um, like I said, hopefully this video touched you. Um, I didn't intend on this video to be this long, but hey, I think I said it in the beginning of the video, I'm gonna just let the Holy Spirit talk. And yeah, bro, the Holy Spirit talk. You feel me? Because we almost an hour and something minutes. You feel me? So. Um, yeah, bro, before I go, uh, I did this in the last video and I want to do it on this video too because, hey, you may be like I was. Um, you may be struggling with, with, with those addictions of pornography, weed, smoking, and you want to, and you want to stop. You really have that desire to stop or you don't really have that desire to stop, but you felt some type of, like I felt when I was watching those videos before I knew what conviction was, you were like, you feeling something in you that's tugging you and saying, Hey, look, bro, I need to change. You know what I'm saying? Or girl, I, or sis, I need to change. <laughs> you feel me? But, um, yeah, if you're that person, man, just, just repeat these words out to me. If you want to give your life to Christ and take the righteous walk and make the strides and the, and, and strive to be like the righteous one. Um, just repeat these words out to me, dear Lord Jesus. I am a sinner, and I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and I ask that you come into my life and make me a new creation in you. I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he rose, and that he died and rose on the third day for my sins. Devil, I don't belong to you anymore, and 
I want you to say whatever you're addicted to, whether that be, you know, pornography, um, money, clubbing, things like that. What, whatever is your, whatever is your, your vice, whatever it is that you replace God for, call it out and say, I don't belong to you anymore. I now belong to the Lord Jesus. He is now Lord and Savior over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for setting me free. Now use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, look, now if you said them words, you are not saved. You are not saved. And, it, and you meant it in your heart. It's not annoying, but it's a, you have to, you feel me, you have to know it and really believe it in your heart that, that every single word that you said, you're not saved, right? And so now get, get around like-minded people. You feel me? Change your environment. Change change the people that you're around, that, that you talk to on a daily basis. Uh, change the content that you consume, whether you got to delete IG, Twitter, or X, <laughs> TikTok, you feel me? Whatever it is, change your environment, cut those things off, um, and get up under or get around a community of like-minded Christians. You feel me? Really holy foot. Holy Spirit filled Christians and God fearing Christians, man, um, that are gonna hold you accountable. You feel me? Because we need those accountability. We need those accountability partners that's gonna speak life into us, and not just be a yes man or a yes or a yes woman. You, you feel me? In in our corner, no. We need somebody that's gonna keep it real with us. Tell us, hey, look, don't need, don't need to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, get around those people, man. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, you, you're gonna be good as long as you stay connected to the source, you feel me? You can't turn on the lamp. You can't turn on your light if it's not plugged into the source, man. So stay connected to the source and that source is Jesus Christ, man. So yeah, I'm done. I done rambled on. Uh, this is already going on 11 minutes. <laughs> so I think this video is probably gonna be an hour and 15 something minutes long. So, but yeah, hopefully y'all took something away, man. Um, and yeah, bro, I'm, I'm done. So stay tuned for the next video. Whenever that is, I will let you know. Bars. <laughs> well, God will let me know too. You feel me? Because he's the one to speak. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it. So now with that being said, it's your boy, Nate Just Dope, signing out. Deuces.